the Joe Rogan experience. We also, there's a concern about those systems being vulnerable to third party attacks. Yeah. So hacking. Yeah. yeah this, it, that's a, that's a fascinating question. I think there is a whole discipline called adversarial machine learning in AI, which basically any kind of system you can think of, how we can feed it examples, how we can add a little bit of noise to the system to fool it completely. So there's been demonstrations on Alexa, for example, where you can take, uh, you can take, uh, you can feed noise into the system that's imperceptible to us humans, and make it believe you said anything. So fool the system into thinking, so ordering extra toilet paper. I don't know. In uh, the same for cars, you can feed noise into the cameras to make it believe that there is or there isn't a pedestrian, mm. that there is or there isn't lane markings. So someone could do this, the- in theory at least. In, uh, in theory, that's the big difference. Is In theory, is doable. You can do demonstrations. In practice, it's actually really difficult to do in the real world. So in the lab, you can do it. You can construct a situation where a pedestrian can wear certain types of clothing or put up a certain kind of sign where they disappear from the system. I have to ask you this because now I just remember this. You'd be the perfect person to talk about this. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember this case, but there was a guy named Michael Hastings. Michael Hastings was a journalist, and uh, he was... I believe in Iraq or Afghanistan. He was somewhere overseas and he was stuck there because of this volcano that erupted in, I believe, Iceland. Mm -hmm. And he was over there for the Rolling Stone magazine uh, and doing, doing an article about a general. Well, he stayed there for a long time because they were stranded because of the volcano and they got real comfortable around him. And uh, he reported a lot of the stuff that they said and did that maybe they thought that he probably wouldn't have reported on, including them saying disparaging things about President Obama at the time. Anyway, comes back. The general was forced to resign. Um, he was a beloved general, and uh, Michael Hastings was in fearing for his life because he thought that they were going to come and get him because these people were very, very angry at him. He wound up driving his car into a tree going like 120 miles an hour and the car exploded and the engine went flying and people that were the conspiracy theorists were saying they believed that that car had been rigged to work autonomously or that someone for some third party bad person decided to or good person depending on your perspective decided to drive that guy's car into a fucking tree at 120 miles an hour do you think that that, and this is 2011, Michael Hastings' death, 12, maybe, 2012? I think that sounds right, 12. Let's see what it says. 2013. 2013? Yeah, June 2013. Do you think that in 2013 that would have been possible? It's entirely possible. Mm. No, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the <laughs> to Joe Rogan subreddit. Okay. Uh, check that one off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, pull that up. Check uh, that off. <laughs> um, I, uh, whether it's possible is an interesting question. Whether it's likely is another question. I, I, I think it's very unlikely. And... But the other most important question is that something we should worry at scale about our future is cars being used to assassinate essentially people. Mm-hmm. I'm Russian, so I've I've heard of those things being done by uh, our friend Putin over. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I think it's very uh, unlikely that this kind of thing would happen at scale. That people would use this. I think there would be more effective ways to achieve this kind of end. For sure. And I, I just think it's a very difficult technical challenge that uh, uh, if hacking happens, it would be at a different level than h- hacking the AI systems. It would be just hacking software. Right. And s- hacking software is the kind of the, the kind of thing that can happen with anything, an elevator, so- elevator software or – uh, any kind of software that operates any aspect of our lives could be hacked in that same kind of way. Right. My my question, though, was in 2013, was that technology available where they could take over someone's car? 
Do you know what car it was? Mercedes. I think it was an C- S class. C two fifty. C <clears throat> C C class. It's po- yes, yes, yes. But I uh, I don't think. Oh boy, this is like uh, no. I mean, listen, this has been widely speculated. I know. I'm just asking you because you're actually an expert. I mean, it's very rare that you get an expert in autonomous vehicles, and you get to run a conspiracy theory by them to see if they can just put a stamp okay. on it being possible or not. Let me just say that Alex Jones is officially not allowed to say MIT scientist says, <laughs> which is exactly what he's going to try to do. Uh, no, I, I'm. First of all, let me back off and say I am not a security expert, which is a very important difference. That is, that is important. Uh, so then, uh, autonomous vehicle. I build uh, autonomous vehicle systems. I don't know how to make them extremely robust to security to hacking attacks. Right. And I have a lot of really good friends, which are some of the coolest people uh, I, I know, who are basically hackers converted to security experts. I would say, though, loosely speaking, I think the technology was there, yes, for with physical access to the car to be able to control it. But I don't, I think it's extremely unlikely that's what happened. I agree. I, I see where you're coming from. Um, I'm not asking you whether or not it's likely that it happened. I'm, I'm sure you don't even have much information on the case because I had to explain it to you, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, the guy also had uh, some serious amphetamines in his system. Um, they compared it to crystal meth, but the reality is he was a journalist and most journalists, I want to say most, a lot are on Adderall and Adderall is essentially amphetamines. I mean, that's what it is. It's real. It's like, it's like next door neighbors to crystal meth it really is. Um, he, is it, well, you said it's possible. They could tr- actually get it to turn the wheel. Yeah, so I have to look at the exact system. Like it's that drive-by wire thing that mm-hmm. I mentioned. Some systems are not; uh, it's not so easy to turn the wheel. Actually, right? Could with, with but code. it could get him to just accelerate out of control. Accelerate he was going like 120 something miles an hour and he slammed into a tree. It's entirely possible. Ah, you can't do it twice. The um, the systems back then though were far more primitive, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, but it's it's really again the the attack vectors here. The, so the the way you hack these systems, I have more to do with the software, low level software that can be primitive than the high level AI stuff. Right, but my issue with it was there's no cameras on the outside of the vehicle like there is on a Tesla of today, which has autonomous driving as an option. Right. Absolutely. So okay, I see your point now. So you wouldn't be hacking the system that perceives the world and acts right. based on the world. It would literally be malfunction that forces it to not be able to break accelerate right. uncontrollably right which is a you know it's a more basic kind of attack mm-hmm. than than control than making the car steer out of lane yes. for example. yes that's a different that that's what people worry about with autonomous vehicles when more and more you're talking about potentially 10 20 million lines of source code mm-hmm. so there's, there's all this code and so obviously it becomes uh, amenable susceptible to bugs that can be exploited to hack the code and so people are worried uh legitimately so that these security attacks would uh would lead to these kind of um well at the worst case assassinations but yeah. really sort of just basic uh, basic attacks basic uh, hacking attacks and i, I think it's I, I think that's something that people in the automotive industry and certainly tesla is really w- working hard on and making sure that the that everything is secure. There's going to be, of course, vulnerabilities always, but uh, I think they're really serious about preventing them. But in the demonstration space, you'll be able to demonstrate some interesting ways to trick the system in Mm. in terms of computer vision. This all boils down to that these systems are actually, that are ones that are camera-based, are not as robust as our human eyes are to the world. So like I said, if you add a little bit of noise, you can convince it to see anything. To us humans, it'll look like the same road, like the same three pedestrians crossing Could you the draw road. like a little person on the camera lens? <laughs> They're little uh, cameras, right? You could get down there with a Sharpie. Like, oh my God, there's a guy on the road. That, that's uh, that's <laughs> one attack vector that uh, is draw stuff. But it, you, you jokingly say that, but that's a look really possibility. The sun plays tricks on Cadillac Super Cruise. Next generation system will address camera problem. Oh, well, as long as the next generation addresses it, you fucking assholes. <laughs> the sun plays tricks on it? 
So next gen system is something you're going to have to bring that Cadillac into the dealership, and they're going to have to update the software. Update it, yeah. Whereas Tesla would just handle that shit over the air. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, an update the other day. I was like, all right. And the question okay. is the same was so that that's an exciting, powerful capability, but then the Boeing, the flip side, right. is you know uh, it yeah. can significantly change the behavior of the system, and there there could be a glitch. There could be a glitch. There could be a bug. Jesus. That, the Boeing one's terrifying. Especially with a lot of, I mean, that number, whatever it is, it's like 300 combined, 300 plus people dead, maybe even 400. I mean, that's, yep. t I, I don't even know how to think, think about that number. Yeah, all from a software glitch. The guy who coded it or the girl who coded it must feel fucking terrible. Yeah. And we, we, you kind of you, you, fuck, you, man. It's it's uh it's a lot of burden, and it's one of the reasons it's one of the most exciting things to work on. Actually, is the code we write has the capability to save human life, but the terrifying thing is it also has the capability to take human life, and that's a that's a weird place to be as an engineer, where directly a little piece of code, you know, I write thousands of them a day you know basically notes you're taking could eventually lead to uh somebody dying <laughs>